all of us execute a plan. But the question is, is, is the plan you're executing leading you to where you want to go? If you have any desire whatsoever to eventually own a house, I'd like to point out to you the three biggest mistakes that you could be making that's going to keep you renting forever. The first one is accepting anything that you might see on the internet as true. I've seen some of the same videos you probably have. And I'll tell you, the one that gets my eye is when someone starts talking about the math associated with owning a house. It usually goes something like this. Let's say your rent is $2,500, but to buy that same house, you'd be closer to $3,000. If you rented instead of bought the house, you could take that extra $500 and invest it. Now, the theory is, is that if you invest that $500 over a longer period of time, that you're going to have more than you would if you just paid off a loan and you look at the equity. That may very well be true. But what that doesn't do is take into account things like the tax savings, or how about this? Let's say that you had $600,000 in your investment account. Compare that with having $600,000 in a house that's fully paid off. If you were sued, how much of that money in that investment account would be at risk? All of it. That house, if you protect it with the homestead exemption, would be shielded from any types of lawsuits or judgments for damages. Now, the other one I see all the time is when a YouTube guru walks down the street of a new build community where there's a lot of available signs in the yards. Obviously, that builder has built too many houses, right? Surely that's a sign of a pending housing crash, right? <laughs> well, take a look at this street. Virtually all of these houses had available signs in the yard in the middle of December. It is now mid-February, and as you can see, the ones without the signs have owners living in them. The sold signs are ones that the deals are still pending. On that street less than two months ago, someone could have walked down and said, surely this builder is overbuilding. But fast forward two months later, and all of those houses are sold, and they're building more houses in the next phase. Now, the second biggest mistake I see people make, let's say that you go so far as to get a pre-approval. And let's say that pre-approval is only for $300,000. Why in the world would you start looking at houses that are listed for sale for $600,000? I can certainly understand that you would like to buy more than you can afford, but if you set the bar too high, you're going to be disappointed with options that you could legitimately buy today with your current credit, income, and savings. Let's take this a step further. Let's say that low approval is only going to buy you a house that you may not be 100% happy with, but if you're willing to do a little bit of work to it, you could potentially increase the value of that house faster than you're paying off the mortgage. If you're honest with yourself, you're gonna realize that any place you live, you have a tendency to upgrade it. The apartment, you're buying new furniture, you're adding accessories, or in a house, any of those changes you make to the house could represent more money in your pocket somewhere down the line when you decide to sell it. Now, the final mistake I see people making all the time with respect to home buying is focusing on one component of the home buying process and ignoring everything else. One of the hottest topics for the last two years has been the rise in interest rates. Yes, it's gonna cost you more over time. And yes, a bigger percentage of your mortgage payment is gonna be interest if you're paying a 7% versus a 3%. But what that doesn't take into account is how the prices of homes have decreased in response to the higher interest rates. So in other words, even though the interest rate is higher, you could purchase a house that just two years ago was substantially more expensive. If you like this video, you should check out this other one I did about the Austin housing market. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. That way you'll get a notification every time I post a new video.